Good evening everyone. This is Dr. Vineet Sahagal and welcome to our Numero Uno in Ophthalmology series. Today we would be going to discuss about a very important topic that is very close to my heart that is the eyelid tumors. Eyelid tumors usually we ignore it when we do the preparation for PGME but this is a very very important topic. Why this is so much important because the thing is that in this topic what you get is that you also see in your clinic and in your OPD also that some people come to you with some cosmetic issues and when you see the eyelid you see that some growth is going on. So this growth, this eyelid tumors can be something which is benign which is just of the cosmetic importance but sometimes these eyelid tumors can be malignant and these malignant tumors if they are not basically got in time they can basically cause a lot of damage to the your eyelid to the eyeball and ultimately they can spread through the various modes to the whole body and can be catastrophic to the patient. So myself Dr. Vinny Sehgal in this session would be talking about the eyelid tumors, the various types of eyelid tumors, how are they clinically presented and what are the important points regarding their treatment strategy. You can see all my lectures exclusively on the Unacademy Learning app. If you want to subscribe for the plus subscription, you would have the daily live classes, live tests and quizzes, there would be structured courses and there is unlimited access to all the video lectures. You can also go with the iconic subscription where you would have the best of the unacademy and the best of the prep ladder with the video lectures, question bank 2.0 and the rapid revision course as well. There is a limited time offer where you are getting lots of discounts on the 36 months 24 months, 18 months and 12 months subscription of the iconic subscription. Use my code OFTHEL10 to basically subscribe for any of them. Another important thing that you should remember is that if you basically subscribe right now for a 3 month course you would also get 1 month free of cost. Okay and you can have the basically enroll for any of the batch course which is going on. Two important batch courses which are going on is the NEET PG season 1 batch as well as the FMG test and analysis batch which are starting from the 28th of April. Lots of questions are there on the Academy Learning app. You can just practice them free of cost and you can ask your doubts also. There is a free grand test which is going to held on the 25th of April 2.30 pm to 6 pm. Please do that and if you have any doubts you can ask us. So before I basically end my subscription pitch. Download the Unacademy Learning app, use my code OFTHEL10 to unlock the free platform as well as to subscribe for the platform. So with this I would be starting my lecture. So the eyelid tumors, any type of tumors we basically divide it into two parts, benign and malignant tumors. Now if I talk about the eyelid tumors to be specific, there are many types of benign tumor. The first one is just papilloma, okay, I call it simple papilloma. Then there can be a blackish spot which I call nevus, okay, a black nevus can be there. Then sometimes you may say, uh, see a dilated blood vessel, I call it angioma, a whole area of the dilated blood vessel, I call it hemangioma and then we can have sometimes in neurofibromatosis, we can have a lesion on the eyelid which is elevated which I call neurofibroma. So these are some benign lesions which would we would discuss one by one. Remember there can be some precancerous conditions to the these eyelid tumors which can basically convert them from the benign to the malignant. What are these precancerous conditions? First of all is if you are exposed to the UV light. So you may have a solar keratosis. Then any condition where you are having a carcinoma in C2. So you have done a biopsy and up in biopsy you see that there is an invasion up to the basement membrane. So you may have a carcinoma in C2 and a condition which is called xeroderma pigmentosa. Remember three very important precancerous conditions for the malignant tumors of the eyelids. With that I would be starting the discussion of the benign tumors. If you can see here. If can you can see here this tumor okay this elevated lesion this is the papilloma it is one of the most common benign tumor it can be a seborrheic one which have the whitish flakes or it can be a squamatous one okay these are the simple papillomas if the patient is having some cosmetic issues he can basically get it removed 
okay so the only indication of removing a papilloma is a cosmetic indication by the patient then we have more common ones that is called xanthalasma if you can see here these gray this whitish yellowish lesions these whitish yellowish lesions these are basically called xanthalasmas so this creamy yellowish plaques which we see on the eyelid they are more commonly seen in females the risk factor is diabetes and hypercholesterolemia okay very important is hypercholesterolemia so they can ask you a question a patient presented with this condition she is also having a hypercholesterolemia what is your diagnosis your diagnosis would be simple xanthalasma then we have a more common type of lesions which are seen in the children i call it hemangioma and the one i would be discussing here would be capillary hemangioma they are the most common benign eyelid tumors of the orbit okay so these are the most common benign tumors of the eyelid in a children in a child okay what they basically consist of they are consisting of the proliferating capillaries and endothelial cells as the name suggests as the name suggest hemangioma it is basically consist of proliferating capillaries and endothelial cells very important thing is that it is mostly self resolving you do not need to treat the patient but if it is not resolving it can bleed with a trauma so in that case where it is not basically uh, resolving itself then you can go with some treatment strategies like intralesional steroids we also can basically give propanolol oral propanolol have been seen as very much effective in hemangioma as per my myself uh, is related i had few uh, years back when i was doing a fellowship i had a patient who is having a choroidal hemangioma so these the patient was having a very high intraocular pressure we did a trabeculectomy surgery but still these hemangiomas they are basically perfusing and there is a lot of vitreitis we could not go anteriorly or posteriorly in this patient because of the systemic issues as well so we tried to give the propanolol and to our utter surprise and to our well being this patient basically resolved very well so propanolol if basically given to the child at right time may help i'm not all saying always but it may help in the resolution of this capillary hemangioma then you can also go with the radiotherapy or the excision also okay then we have the port wine stain as i told you many times the port wine stain we see it can you see this one this reddish area so this is the port wine stain which we see in the sturge weber syndrome unlike your capillary hemangioma they do not regress okay a very important point and remember in the sturge weber syndrome the patient may have a increased episcleral venous pressure which can lead to glaucoma now the next one is neurofibroma if you can see this patient this tumor this is basically called a plexiform neurofibroma okay so plexiform neurofibroma is another type of benign tumor then you can have keratokanthomas so in keratokanthomas there is a protrusion can you see the elevated region and if you remove it and do the histopathology it would be a keratin filled central crater okay so very important point here is in the patient of keratokanthoma there is a keratin filled central crater okay all of these patients what you can do is you can just do a simple excision but remember if you feel slightest of suspicion go for a biopsy in any of the case because sometimes the malignant tumors have very varied type of presentation they can present early they can present late they can be simple papillomas that we think but they may be having something big inside so whenever you have a slightest of doubt you can go with a biopsy and see what is the lesion that you are so the next topic i would be discussing today is the malignant tumors first of all what are the different types of malignant tumors of the eyelids the one which is the most common is the basal cell carcinoma also called rodent tumor the second one we would discuss is the squamous cell carcinoma 
the third one which is more common in india and as well as in the upper lid is sebaceous cell carcinoma and the one which is least common but most dangerous is the malignant melanoma let's discuss all these one by one so first of all the basal cell carcinoma also called rodent ulcer it is the most common tumor of the eyelid and if we say which is the part which it basically involves first so let's say this is my eyelid so these basal cell carcinomas which are also called rodent ulcer something basically eating away the tissue of the eyelid it is most commonly seen in the lower lid followed by the medial canthus okay then the upper lid and last but not the least is the outer canthus so can you say it goes like this okay in its incidence so maximum is in your lower lid and minimum is at your lateral canthus and outer canthus okay then this presentation as i told you the malignant tumors can have varied type of presentation the most common one is that you have on the eyelid there is something which is basically elevating okay so there is a nodule and then there is a ulceration in the center of this nodule okay so what i call it i call it nodulo ulcerative presentation okay so the nodulo ulcerative is nodulo ulcerative is the most common presentation then the next thing that you have to remember if you do a biopsy in the basal cell carcinoma you would have special appearance of which the basal cell carcinoma where these tumor cells you can see in the dermis and these cells are called basaloid cells so the dermis is involved with these cells which are called basaloid cells characteristic of the histopathology of the basal cell carcinoma if you can see in this picture you are seeing a nodule in the inferior part of the eyelid and if you remove it and send it for biopsy you may get a basaloid cells so remember the lesion any lesion which is in the inferior eyelid which is not resolving a slightest bit of doubt you go with the biopsy and see if the basaloid cells are there if the basaloid cells are there then you can basically what you have to do is you have to remove it you totally have to remove this tumor and also keep 1 mm margin also okay so remove it with 1 mm margin so much important so if they ask what is the treatment strategy so treatment strategy is a simple and straight forward excision of the mass with 1 mm margins but if the patient is not basically in a condition where you can go with the excision let's say the patient is moribund very old age maybe having disseminated basal cell carcinoma and other diseases also then you can basically go with the radiotherapy and cryotherapy so remember radiotherapy and cryotherapy are reserved for only the inoperable cases most of the times for your exam purpose remember the excision is the main modality excision with the mite margins okay then the next type of blood tumor is your squamous cell carcinoma so there are many precancerous conditions which basically can lead to squamous cell carcinoma like actinitic keratosis okay actinitic keratosis bowens disease and radiation dermatosis so all of these are very very important precancerous conditions for your squamous cell carcinoma these squamous cell carcinoma remember they always arise from mucocutaneous junctions so let's say this is your skin and this is your conjunctival okay so the mucocutaneous junctions they are very very important for these squamous cell carcinomas okay so like your basal cell tumor they may also may be having ulcerative they may be having a scaly or erythematous plaque and they may also have some elevated margins from just seeing the condition 
so if you have seen here by just seeing the condition you cannot tell whether this patient is having a basal cell carcinoma or squamous cell carcinoma you have to do a excision and after the excision you do a biopsy when you do a biopsy you get like the basaloid cells that you were getting in the patient of the basal cell car carcinoma in the patient of squamous cell carcinoma you get specific sign which is called keratin pearls very very important sign in the histopathology that you get keratin pearls in a squamous cell carcinoma and sometimes this there is a more metastasis in the cases of squamous cell carcinoma you may get the metastasis to the your submandibular or preocular preauricular sorry preauricular nodes okay so whenever you are seeing the squamous cell carcinoma also do a palpation of these nodes to see if there is any enlargement of these lymph nodes also because these squamous cell carcinoma are very much notorious for their metastasis to these nodes and as i told you in the basal cell carcinoma here also the treatment of choice is remove the tumor okay then i come to the next tumor which is most important for exam that is your sebaceous cell carcinoma now this is more commonly seen in the indian subcontinent you would get a 45 year old female she would be having a mass she would also say that she has a complaints of recurrent chalazion she has got operated for recurrent chalazion or there is a recurrent blepharitis in that when you basically see this tumor you see that there is a mass on the upper eyelid and also you would see that there is a destruction of lid architecture you would have metaurosis metaurosis means there is loss of eyelashes you may be having polyosis you may be having destruction of the margins so these all can you see this yellowish spots so the meibomian gland inflammation so you can have all of these in your patient of sebaceous cell carcinoma so another important question from which glands they basically originate your answer is they originate from your meibomian glands of the eyelids as i told you they cause the destruction of the lid architecture and if we do the biopsy you can see a specific appearance i told you in the in your basal cell carcinoma you get a basaloid appearance in your squamous cell carcinoma you get a appearance which is called keratin pearls so similarly in a sebaceous cell carcinoma you would get a appearance or you would get a specific histopathology feature which is called pegitoid spread pegitoid spread now what is the meaning of pegitoid spread so initially you may be having the sebaceous cell carcinoma the tumor cells in this area after some time you can get these tumor cells in the other area so there is a intra epithelial transfer of these tumor cells these tumor cells go from one place to other but the remaining area is normal okay so iske beech ka area वो नॉर्मल है लेकिन ट्यूमर सेल्स पहले एक जगह से हैं, एक जगह से दूसरी जगह जाएंगे सो दिस इज बेसिकली कॉल्ड अ पेगेटॉइड स्प्रेड अ करेक्टरिस्टिक ऑफ सेबेशियस सेल कार्सिनोमा ऑल्सो रिमेंबर लाइक योर पेशेंट ऑफ द स्वेमस सेल कार्सिनोमा द सेबेशियस सेल कार्सिनोमा दीज सेल्स कैन ऑल्सो बेसिकली गो और मेटास्टिसाइज टू योर रीजनल लिम्फ नोट ओके सो what is the treatment treatment again is your excision but remember sometimes the sebaceous cell carcinoma it is so destructive that it basically involves your whole orbit with the orbit it also involves your eyeball so when your orbit eyeball and everything is involved this may be very catastrophic to the patient the patient may have a high mortality rate also so in that cases what you can do is you can do a very destructive procedure that is called excentration okay we would talk about the destructive surgeries of the eye just remember the name excentration where i remove the eyeball the whole eyelid as well as the orbital content the periorbital fascia and the muscle so excentration can be an option in the in the later stage of sebaceous cell carcinoma early stage we do as we do in the other disease we do a excision there okay 
the last one which is the least common is the malignant melanoma malignant melanoma usually comes from a pre existing lesion okay so there is a pre existing nevus you may have a malignant melanoma from that very important is it can like your other places like your malignant melanoma of the skin the similarly you can have few varieties like the first one and the most common one is called lentigo maligna where you have the flat well definited pigmented lesions so the first one is your lentigo maligna flat well defined pigmented lesions the second one is superficial spreading it spreads over some surface i call it a superficial spreading mildly elevated lesions and the third one is it basically uh, basically tries to mimic the presentation of your basal cell carcinoma i call it nodular type of malignant melanoma so it has nodules and it may be having ulcerated elevated and bleeding in these lesions so these are the different types of malignant melanoma so these are some important points which you should remember regarding the eyelid tumors so before i end the session there is a quick recap with the help of some mcqs so my first question is which is the most common type of eyelid tumor so the most common type of eyelid tumor i told you is basal cell carcinoma but the answer changes if they ask most common type of upper eyelid tumor if they ask about the upper eyelid then the answer is sebaceous cell carcinoma then our next question is which is the most common type of malignant eyelid tumor in a patient having a recurrent chalazion so whenever there is a recurrent chalazion the answer is again the sebaceous cell carcinoma then which is the most common type of i think this is done okay so the next question is identify the type of benign tumor in a patient suffering from hypercholesterolemia okay so patient is having a hypercholesterolemia so you would definitely see the yellowish plaque like lesions here so this patient is having a xanthalesma a type of benign tumor the next the next question is the drug that is useful in capillary hemangioma i told you the drug that is useful is propanolol most of the times capillary hemangioma resolves on itself but if it is not resolving you can give intralesional steroids if it is not you are basically uh, having a risk of bleeding there you can use propanolol also in some of the cases it resolves also you can go with the radiotherapy in these patients so thank you very much for attending this session if you have any doubts you can just put it in the comment section and i would be back with the lots of image based questions lot of mcq discussion only on the let's crack neat pg youtube channel so subscribe for the channel and hit the bell icon for notifications if you have any doubts you can also ask me on the telegram group there is the link of the telegram group which is given in the description and if you want to join the unacademy learning app use my code of thel10 to unlock the free platform and get your need preparation to a high with us thank you very much have a good day